All right, kiddo, let me explain what we're looking at here. This is the Yaw VR motion simulator. Basically what you do is you, there we go. You throw on your VR headset, you strap yourself into this chair and you're like, you're driving a car or you're flying a plane and it's like, you know, and it moves around like that. So what do you think? Sound pretty cool? Yeah. Want to help me set it up? Yeah, please. Are you sure you wouldn't rather go and roast marshmallows with your sisters? Yeah. All right. He can be taught. Maybe you better go check on your sisters, but you can come right back. Being stuck inside, I guess this is the next best thing to getting out and about. So you want a job to do? Yeah, please. I want you to unwrap these plastic covered pieces. So I think this is the pro version, which goes from 300 watt motors to three 120 watt motors, and then also adds a, a headrest and uh, something else as well. The full details are on their website, but basically there's two pieces. And the idea is that when you're not using it, which a lot of the time you won't be, like you can't live in VR, yet. It folds up kind of compact and just kind of goes like that, like a little thing and you can move it around. Oh yeah, there's a headset. So this must be the pro version. On the back, we just got a power button, power in, LAN. Oh yeah, emergency stop. I guess they intend for this to be used in like recreation centers and stuff like that. So it makes sense they'd have those kinds of features. Ooh, made in Hungary. Pro move seems to be to kind of slide it on there. It's a pain, but once it's on, it's much nicer than that previous racing chair that we checked out. Like it doesn't feel like there's a lot of give to it versus having it hard mounted and having to kind of wrench all the metal together. Are you helping or what? What's <laughs> the um, Mount the footrest plate on the foot holder arm. Oh, so there's a mount on the inside here that takes these pegs. It's gonna go through here. It's a positional tracker in here. You wanna do the honors? Flip it on. And, oh, hey, it's got lights. Now some of these I think are for accessories, but some of these I think are just to, yeah, there we go. Yeah. To have a backrest and then a headrest. Oh, my feet definitely don't reach that right now. Oh, I feel a little ridiculous. Can you hold the headrest where my head kind of is and then uh, line it up with the holes down there? Right there, okay, hold it there. Don't move. Uh, I got it somehow, whoa! Oh shoot, did it fall? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. All right, secured that on there, whoa! Um, ah. Can you help pick me? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay, I'll go back. Okay. Okay. All right. This really does seem like it's designed for entertainment centers. Most of the instructions seem to suggest that there's an operator standing nearby helping the player. In terms of game support, you can make your own games using their SDK. Uh, you can use sim tools to check out compatible games. Uh, the roller coaster simulator sounds good. You want to ride a virtual roller coaster? And then there's also their game engine that apparently works with third party games. So let's go ahead and Yaw VR game engine. Here we go. This is working. Now let's try it with the Yaw VR. This is extremely user unfriendly. Okay, we got to go into the config file for Dirt Rally 2. UDP enabled equals true. Extra data equals one. Got on their Discord, turns out the same baggie that's supposed to contain these screws also has a little key you stick into the back. And that's why I spent the last hour and a half diagnosing why the motors won't turn on. But theoretically, uh, if I press start now, it should start. I'm going for a test ride. Woo! Is that the test ride? Well, no, I think it does more. No? Hey, whoa, hey, there we go. Hey, okay, it's something. Obviously, this is not very immersive, you know, not having the VR headset on and stuff. This is raw. 
To get the settings application open at all, I had to find a tip on a GitHub discussion somewhere that suggested disabling the camera, and I finally managed to get in. Now I gotta enter my IP address for my Yaw VR, enable the motion compensation. Apparently, I've gotta take a controller and stick it near the pivot, and then calibrate. We're getting close, We're getting real close. After much confusion, the motion compensation built into the Yaw VR never got working here, but I've got a controller strapped to the back of the headrest here, which theoretically should allow me to at least experience the darn thing for the first time tonight. So I'm firing up Dirt Rally 2.0. Okay, and I have drifted off course again you can see it overcompensating for how much I'm turning like it's just guessing at this point I guess you have to maybe just uh, something I need to configure I am all over the place right now this is absolutely nauseating it's what did I hit I mean when it works it's really cool I am now driving sideways oh well, my son asked me what it's gonna be like to crash I guess we'll find out whoa that is horrible all right it's not great so far, not great. There's been progress. It's been a couple days, but that's okay. I was able to get motion compensation working using the strap a controller to the back of the Yaw VR method. They did send some new software over, so I'm gonna try that and see if we can get it working with its own positional tracking. But hey, at least we can try it out. So I'm gonna get my helper back. He has been bugging me for two days to try this thing out. Before I do that, I wanna show the final setup. There is an arm for mounting a racing wheel, but I have opted for a controller to simplify things as much as possible. I had a bad experience with uh, my C-stand falling down, so I extended the arm so it comes straight down over the Yaw VR. Once Yaw is actually working, this thing spins 360 degrees, and if you, you know, you're playing NASCAR and you're turning to the left, it'll actually keep spinning you around to the left until you tangle yourself up. So definitely recommend a setup like this. The startup procedure is we need to have Yaw VR open. We need to have Game Engine going, which uh, syncs up the Yaw VR with the games that we're gonna try. So I need to go into Steam VR and I need to set it to use the Yaw VR um, Oh, motion compensation. I can just plonk a controller right onto there, use that to calibrate, and then it will be able to use the Yaw VR itself to compensate for the motion. So as the Yaw VR moves around, that motion, so that spinning around, is canceled out by the headset so that you still see out the cockpit of the car instead of your view turning as the uh, Yaw VR turns. Turning this should turn the world, and it doesn't. Okay, so that didn't work, fine. That's how it's supposed to work at some point with a software update. We're gonna go back to the old way. We're just gonna strap a controller to the back of the thing. It works. It's working! Yes! Going over bumps in this game is uh, a little more jarring when you're, <laughs> when you're thrown around in the seat. Do you feel like you're driving? All right, go ahead and press start to pause. Now that it's working, we can actually go in and we can tune some of the parameters. We can change the multipliers for the different inputs. So you can see if uh, you want your pitch to be a little bit less extreme, you can change that to a you know, 0.4. If you want roll to be really extreme, you could change that to a multiplier of two. Okay, so there's actually left and right vibration. And they said that can help with some disorientation sensation. Oof. Oh boy. Okay, I'm not a good driver. Okay, not much traction on the grass here. That is definitely a gravel road. Okay. Oh, okay. Overcooked that one a little. Okay, give it a shot. Is that better? 
Yeah. Okay, don't go too fast. The left triggers your brake. Nice. You can go a little faster. You know what? You can go whatever speed you're comfortable with. <laughs> what did it feel like? It's not as bumpy anymore, but it's still a little bit bumpy. Did it feel like you were accelerating and braking and turning and going over stuff? Yeah. It's pretty cool. You want to try something else? Yeah, please. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Okay. After spending about 10 hours with the Yaw VR, of which maybe an hour of it was in the chair with it actually working, playing games, I'm ready to draw at least some preliminary conclusions. The hardware is super cool. It's compact, it's light enough that a single person can pick it up and move it around, and it really does give you 360 degrees of freedom. But the software is unpolished and the documentation is even worse. If I were gonna evaluate this thing from the perspective of a typical iPhone buyer, I would probably give it a one and a half out of 10. But it's important to evaluate a product within the context of its customers as well as its competitors. So some of YaVR's early adopters who I encountered on their surprisingly active Discord while I was trying to get through some of the teething issues asked me to ensure that I'm taking into account the bigger picture here. So YaVR's customers are, yes, end users who intend to install it in their home like what I'm doing, but also commercial entities like experience companies who use it as a portable attraction at corporate events and parties and entertainment centers. And two of those three groups are ones where, given what already exists in the market for uh, you know, motion simulation devices like this, um, it's not expected to be plug and play. And the fact that it can be packed up and folded up while offering a true 360 degrees of freedom is really, really cool. So I think that's fair to bring up. But from my perspective as an end user who is fairly tech literate, even if I'm not a developer on the side, I would say that they do still have a way to go on the software, but the hardware is really cool and I see a lot of potential here. Even though I'm sick and frustrated, and I'm definitely gonna put it away for six months before I look at it again. If you guys enjoyed this video and you like checking out crazy at home, you know, gaming rigs, then maybe check out the Obutto. We actually covered that one quite a while ago. It has like surround monitors. It's like a sim chair kind of thing. Pretty cool. No motion, no motion controls though.